When it comes to multi-stage events, some events look like, or they sound like they'll be multi-stage. This is the real reason why I wanted this so that I have a grid here. They sound like they will be multi-stage, but if you phrase them right, you don't need to think of them as multi-stage. So here's the question. It's Christmas time. Wes is sending Christmas cards out. He's got ten friends. Good for him. And um, <laughs> that came out more sarcastic than I meant. Um, you can see the kinds of cards that he has. They're all in pairs. You see that? Two Christmas trees, two angels, two with snow, two reindeer, two with Santa Claus. Okay, now here's the actual question in such a scenario. What is the probability that Harry and Helmet get matching cards? Okay, now the reason why I'm highlighting this to you is there's a couple of different ways to think about this. I, sorry, I take that back. There's many different ways to think about it. And which way you think about it will define whether this is easy or hard for you. So I'm going to pause for a minute and let you have a go. How would you start this question? Okay, the answer is quite an easy fraction to get to. Um, so I'm not really that interested in the number. What I'm interested in is how are you formulating the question and then going about solving it. Can I give you a couple of minutes to just have a think to your own devices? How would you even conceive of this problem? numerically, diagrammatically, so that you can start to get toward a solution. Two minutes, have a think, and then we'll come back together. And <laughs> One of the interesting things about this is that it's all about, this, the way the textbook says it, which I think is a fair way to describe it, is it's kind of all about the way that you tell the problem, right? The way you conceive of the problem is like 90% of whether this is an easy problem or a hard problem. So I'm going to show you two ways, two ways, uh, and it's really interesting because I've already seen three more here in the room um, that can help you conceive of what's going on. Okay. So here's the first way I've done it. I have thought of this first as a multi-stage event, okay? and there are two stages that I'm interested in. Right? What are the two stages? Well, where's his ten friends, but I'm only really interested in Harry and Helmut. Do you agree? Right, those are the two friends of interest. So what I've done is, being that I've got um, two friends, uh, that's kind of... Whenever I see a two-stage thing, um, that makes me think, can I use a dot diagram? I like dot diagrams, they help me get all the options out in front of me in a pretty logical sort of way. Okay. So here is the skeleton of my dot diagram. I'm going to call this one up the front, I'll call this one Harry, and I'll call this one, uh, let's do it sideways, I'll call this one Helmet. Okay, now, um, part of the issue was, are we choosing friends or are we choosing cards? Well, you can think about it either way. What I'm going to do is think about these friends, like fix them in place, and then choose a card for them. Okay? Because everyone's going to get a card eventually, right? Presuming you bought enough cards. So therefore, if I say, if I go up and have a look at the designs here, um, there are two cards with Christmas trees. Well, let's call them um, Christmas tree one and Christmas tree two. Okay? Um, I'm labeling them as different because two people can't get the same card, right? So I want to distinguish them in some way, okay? Christmas tree one and two, uh, angel one and two, what have I got here? Snow one and two, reindeer one and two, I think it's set course, isn't it? One and two, okay? So these are the ten possible cards Harry could get, and naturally, Helmet has the same um, sample space to choose from. So I'm going to put all of these options down the side of the helmet. But, and this is one of the wonderful things about a dot diagram, the dot diagram itself helps you work out what the sample space will be for the multi-stage event, because some of the um, squares in my grid, which would represent dots, some of them are impossible. Can you tell me which of those squares I can't place a dot in? Anyone? Ah, very good. The diagonal is kind of a dud, isn't it, right? Because they, they both can't get the first Christmas tree card, right? They can both get Christmas tree cards, but not the same one. They both can't get the second one. They both can't get this card, or this card, or this card. So I have a whole bunch of options that have been knocked out. Is that okay? Now, just because of the size of this diagram, I would normally draw dots in all of the valid options remaining, but there's so many that I'm not going to bother. If I hadn't have put the crosses, how many squares would there be in total? Mm -hmm. There will be a hundred, ten by ten, yes? How many have I just removed? Ten. I've removed ten along the diagonal. So now I know, now that I've sort of fixed up my diagram, I now know that the sample space, um, the size of that sample space is a hundred, take away those ten that we just eliminated, yeah? So there are really ninety options 
for the multi-stage event. Helmet gets a card, Harry gets a card. Is that okay? All right, now that I know what the sample space is, all that remains is to work out the favorable outcomes. Yeah? So, for example, how, in what way, where would it be where they both get a Christmas tree card? Have a look. Yeah, um, there's the first Christmas tree, CT1, for Helmet, and the second one for Harry. But of course, there's another way I can do that. Um, they could swap cards, right? Because it doesn't matter which one's which. So those are both good, right? In both of those cases, those are favorable outcomes, okay? And I can keep on going, can't I? Uh, to both get angels, uh, let's see here. Those are the spots where they both get angel cards. Do you see that? Here's where they both get snow cards, they both get reindeer cards, they both get Santa Claus cards. Are you happy with the way that I have, number one, reduced the sample space to be the actual options, and number two, identified the favorable lens? Are you okay with that? And then, of course, there's a lot more dots missing, I'm just not going to bother. Okay, so now I can say, what are the um, favorable outcomes in this case? How many have I ticked in green? I've, I've ticked 10, right? So the favorable outcomes are 10, so therefore my probability will be 1 divided by the other. I'm getting 1 out of 9. Okay. Now some of you got quite close to it. Um, you've got to be careful in terms of the way that you conceive of like these numbers. Hopefully they're beyond doubt. You agree with the way that I formed it. That's part of why a dot diagram is so useful. It kind of is its own argument for where I got these numbers from. There are no other options. I've literally mapped every single one out. But, I'm going to go one step further, um, and again, I didn't make this up, but it's a very helpful way of thinking about it. I can retell this event so that it is not even a multi-stage event. I can retell it, I can reframe it, reword it, so that it's even simpler. Watch. Um, you've got these uh, five pairs of cards, right? Five pairs of cards. Now, do you agree that by the time, let's go back to the original question, by the time Wes has given out all his cards, um, you know, if it was, say, Aaron and Paul, um, who get the same card, it doesn't matter if it was those two, two people among his friends will definitely get the same card. And this will happen five times for each of his five different designs. Does that make sense? So I can actually think at the beginning, well, there will be five, one, two, three, four, five pairs of cards, um, Christmas trees, angels, snow, reindeer, etc. Okay? Now, I'm not bothering to label any of them as to which pair they are, because when you have a look at the original question, does it matter which specific design they get? No, we just want them to match. Okay? Now, eventually, once all the cards have been distributed out, um, they will be matched up. Okay? Now, Harry will be on one of them. You could say helmet easily, but I'm just going to make it alphabetical. Now, do I know at the moment whether that's a Christmas tree or a snow car or a reindeer car? No. Do I care? No, it also doesn't matter. Okay? Now, there is one situation, and only one situation, if these are the paired up designs, in which Helmet will get the same card as him, right? Which situation is that? Where, where can Helmet go? Right there. That's the only space he's got to go, right? But if I just rewind, before we wanted that situation, at this present time, how many different friends do I have to choose from to get the same card as Harry? There are nine friends left to choose from. In other words, the sample space is out of nine. How many of the, those friends are the favorable event? Only Helmet, just the one. Okay. Now, it takes some thought and creativity and imagination to reframe the question in such a way. And I won't pretend to say like, oh yes, of course, you'll think of that very quickly. But my point is just to say, don't just accept the question and the first way that you think of it and then go ahead and start working at the probability. Maybe just, just pause for a second before you launch into it and think about is, is there a way that, I mean, a lot of you didn't even get to this point, dot diagram. Just go to dot diagrams as much as you possibly can for two stage events because they're kind of like a, a safe option. But if you can push it a little further, is there another way that I can restate what the question is trying to do? Often you can land on an even easier way of stating the probability. Okay?